Good morning everybody and Merry Christmas to everyone watching this uh, YouTube channel. This cold, miserable, stormy morning, Boxing Day of all, of all days. Um, right, I'm going to make this a uh, very interesting short film here uh, from Unearthed. And I hope that uh, some of you may enjoy it and welcome a little bit of advice and guidance. I hope you've all had a great Christmas and uh, what a year it's been. I mean, if we were sat here last year talking about the events that were to unfold in 2020, we would never have believed, uh, well, we never have believed any of it really, would we? Um, virus, you know, staying safe, lockdowns, uh, not being able to do our usual uh, chores, things, hobbies, you know, adventures, you name it. Everything was put on hold. People's jobs were put on hold and at risk. Um, so we're out, you know, hopefully we're out the other end a bit soon, but what a year it's been. Uh, detecting has just gone, you know, if I drew a, a graph of my detecting in 2018, 2019, and then did it in 2020, the fines, uh, our adventures would have been sloping completely off the scale. I mean, I can't ever remember a year where I've done very little metal detecting. And I've got very few fines to show from it, I'm afraid. You know, I've probably got into double figure hammered coins. Didn't get any denarius at all in 2020. Uh, very few artifacts. I don't even think. I think I got one Roman brooch, a couple of Roman artifacts, maybe 10 or 11 hammered. Um, you know, I got a lovely medieval key, um, a part of a, a fragment of a Saxon penny, a lovely Tealby penny. A King Stephen cut quarter and the rest would probably just run the mill Edward type pennies. Uh, it's been a real poor year. However, however, let's hope and pray that 2021 is a lot more relaxed for us and we can get out doing the things that we enjoy the most. While we're on the theme of Christmas and things, I got a wonderful card sent to me uh, thanking me with a picture of the gentleman um, on the front wearing his unearthed hat, which is the same as this one. And it was Jerry from Derry. Jerry from Derry wishing me and Melanie uh, a Merry Christmas and thanks for the service that we gave him this year for his detector. So I was really pleased with that coming through the post today, a uh, couple of days back I should say, Christmas Eve. Uh, Jerry from Derry. So if you're watching this Jerry from Derry, thank you very much for that. Me and Melanie really appreciate it and I think it's a very kind uh, gesture. Uh, we've got some nice cards off customers and friends. Uh, we've got some really nice cards off some manufacturers, Coil Tech included, First Texas, uh, My Lab, people like that sent us Christmas cards this year, which is really encouraging. Um, right, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Facebook first, just before we start on the main theme of this of this film. Um, some of you people on here that watch this channel are also members of the face on their Facebook group. Uh, some some may not be. It's that's entirely up to them. Um, but we're going to do some changes in 2021. I'm not 100% happy with how the Facebook group's working and operating. Uh, it's just, it's just, uh, it just to me feels like just another Facebook group sometimes, uh, where you know I'm quite pleased with people posting up their finds and having a bit of banter and showing, you know, the latest detector, whatever if it may be. But I think in 2021 I'm going to do things a little bit differently for the other Facebook group. I'm going to be uh, making it or trying to turn it into a member uh, customer based um, Facebook uh, group so I'm going to concentrate on our customers mainly on the group um, and our friends of Unearthed uh, our followers of Unearthed and we're going to start doing things like discounts for members and customers and we're going to start doing free giveaways uh, probably every month if we can get away 12, 12, uh, 12 giveaways uh, in the year and some competitions for for our customers and, and and friends so i'm going to start rather than having a generic facebook group because there's hundreds and hundreds of them out there that pretty much do all the same thing we're going to base the unearthed uh, facebook group on not the page the group on uh, a bit of a customer based uh, operation if you will so and, and friends of unearthed and followers of unearthed so watch this space there's going to be some changes to it um, and it'll be good. I think there'll be some interesting things going on. There'll be some new products to show first of all for people exclusives. There'll be obviously the magazine, the, the, the Detectorist magazine. People on there will be able to view it. Um, you know, after the VIP launch uh, uh, kicks in, 
and like I said competitions and free giveaways so uh, watch this space watch this space right on to the main topic of this discussion um, this may help people that have come into the hobby recently or maybe been involved in the hobby for a few years and are starting to gain uh, a couple of farms and a couple of local or new permissions wherever that may be the the tale that I'm going to tell now happened to me many many years ago and I'm hoping that it will help you understand a little bit and maybe even use this information advice and guidance to your own uh, means um, I'll talk to you very briefly about the story and how it unfolded many years ago when I was a bit of a kid uh, in my 20s uh, really sort of really enjoying detecting at the time in the 90s 80s and 90s proper into it big time uh, you know going off every weekend to different areas of the country uh, through the week after work detecting away um, and just enjoying the whole detecting experience of finding new coins and artifacts and new things to be discovered and and just the wonders of detecting or the wonders that detecting brings you know, not knowing what's going to come up next and what the next uh, adventure would would uh, turn up however uh, a cautionary tale and it set me back quite a bit was I gained permission off a, an elderly gentleman um, uh, a long long time ago actually um, and it was a decent sized farm it was a spread out farm this is the thing so the fields around his farm weren't necessarily owned by him a few were a few weren't and he had fields up to two or three miles away from where where his farm was based so he had land and fields scattered all over the place and uh, when we gained permission off him, obviously we stuck to the fields close to the farm. We found a few nice things. We sort of made him, um, made sure that he trusted us in, in, in what we were finding and showing him the finds and the coins and artifacts that we were uncovering at the time. And then he said to us one day, he said, I've got some fields uh, about two miles outside of the village. Uh, if you want to try them, they're arable. Um, they're, they're ready to be detected on. There's no seeds in the ground at the moment. You can pretty much go... Uh, there's three or four fields there you can pretty much go at them at your own leisure give them give them a try because it's nearer a bigger more historic uh, village than the one we were detecting and or he found it I thought you know what this sounds really exciting and he drew out a basic sort of route on a bit of paper take you know take the road down at the crossroads turn right over the bridge and it's the field on the left that sort of thing so we pretty much took his advice took ourselves off over the bridge field on the right parked up in the little lay by that was there got our detecting gear on started the detecting away and within 20 minutes half an hour we were finding bits and pieces of interest within three hours we were finding things like broken sacks and brooches and hammered coins and bits of roman material we thought wow this is a really good field dinner time came trotting off the field for our dinner a car pulls up with a rather, rather irate gentleman in it asking what we were doing on his field I said well you know we've got permission off David and you know he's, he's, he's given us the permission he's showed us we've, we've been digging or detecting on his uh, farm for a number of years now Um, you know what are we doing wrong what, what, what's the problem and what it was he transpired that the route and the advice and the directions he gave were for the opposite way in if you will to the to the area that we were detecting on and we took the different way, the different route in, and we were detecting on the neighbouring, neighbouring fields. Now it wasn't a fault of anybody's; it was, it was just a genuine mistake that people make. But it set a seed in my head that every time you get permission off a farmer, if you can, buy a map, an ordnance survey map, or ask the farmer if he's got a, a, a photocopy of a map of his farm, so he can actually write down and draw a boundary. On each of his fields so you know exactly where you're going if that makes sense so what we do with farmers now is we get them to outline the areas of land the parcels of land and even detail which fields are his so we don't make the same mistake again luckily after about five or ten minutes of talking to this particular farmer he was okay about it he understood it was a an accident but um, you know he didn't let us on I asked him if it was okay for us to carry on detecting we'd showed him the finds that we'd made off there and and offered them and said the yours take them they'll come from your land he wasn't interested in that part of it he wasn't really interested in taking the finds at all but he wasn't having us on there detecting either so it was a bit of a, a it was a bit of a gut-wrenching experience that we were actually pretty much on the wrong land uh, and it was just because we'd we'd come into the um 
a particular parcel of land from the opposite direction from what the farmer had gave us. So instead of us being on the right hand side, we were actually on the left hand side fields, which weren't his. So uh, a cautionary tale, if you do get permission of farmers, get them to outline their areas. Um, if it's away from the farm, this was like two and a half miles away. So a two and a half miles away from through some of these country roads feels like 10 miles away or 15 miles away. Believe me, it was a long two and a half miles away. Um, get them to outline on a map the fields that they own so you don't fall into the same trap as me. It was over 25 years ago and we all make mistakes, but it's stuck in my head, always stuck in my head ever since to not make that same mistake. It's an easy mistake to make. And I know for a fact, after talking to many, many different detectorists over the years, that a lot of people do wander off or end up on the wrong parcels of land that are not the, not the permission of the farmer that, or they're not owned by the farmer they've got permission from. So it's an easy mistake to, to make but just don't fall into that trap. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope that helps some of these new uh, gentlemen or ladies that are uh, into detecting now and coming into the hobby. It may just help you uh, get out of a sticky situation and not a, a situation that you're going to find yourself in. That farmer could have been an irate farmer. He could have been really nasty and, and obviously angry, uh, but he was okay. You know, he, you know, it was pretty much calmed down after after five minutes of him ranting and raving about us being on the wrong fields. But it's, a, it's an easy thing to fall into, an easy trap. So I hope that helps. Um, I don't think I'll be detecting, we're in tier two here, which means, well, you know, stay local only. I've got some fields that are, that are you know, maybe a few hundred mile away that I could detect on, or some local fields here that have been uh, trampled on over the years. I don't really fancy going out on them too much. Um, so I might just wait until see what uh, January 2021 brings. See if we can, um, get out and, and start some sort of normality but I've just got this awful feeling we might be in tier three in, in January I'd hate it if we were but what can we do anyway okay thanks very much for watching there will be I'll probably be able to squeeze another episode of detecting talking before the year's out have a great boxing day everybody and stay safe and we'll hopefully catch up with you in the new year bye for now